All righty, we are live. What's up, everybody? What's up, Christian? What's up, brother? <laughs> uh, we are just jumping right into it today. Uh, no, no introduction necessary, but we're getting into the top three stocks that we are watching and looking to buy right now. As you can see on my screen uh, right here, we're going to start off with Amazon. This is something that we really, really, really love, uh, and it is at a super attractive price right now. Christian, why do you think it's so low, and why do you think that we should be buying it up right now? I have no earthly clue why it's so low, <laughs> um, other than it's following the rest of tech. Um, this may sound may sound a little bit ridiculous, but like, do you think the price the the actual price of it has anything to do with why people don't scoop it up as much, being three thousand dollars a share? I don't think it, that has a whole lot to do with it. I mean, we saw Tesla go to twenty five hundred, and people were buying it without blinking an eye, um, sure. or close to twenty five hundred, I should say. There's nothing, there's, I don't think there's anything that makes this justified. Yeah. So for me, if anything, they have a lot of positive developments that are going on. Um, and in my mind, I feel like we're in a weird place where if there's no news, it doesn't help the stock. And so you just need big news lately. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, I think it's, it's not justified and, I need to check if actually I got filled because I'm a huge fan and I said <laughs> I was buying in uh, under 2975. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. Honestly, the price here on Amazon seems a bit laughable. Um, this is going to be crazy. I think that, I mean, it, it probably just goes along with September being a weird month. I mean, you can make as many excuses as you want as to why tech and uh, Amazon is down this far. But honestly, it does not, the valuation doesn't really kind of, when you compare it to everything else, it, it just seems like it's laughable at this price. So uh, clear buy for Amazon for me. Where where would you see this coming back to? You might be asking yourself. I think that, you know, if if by some chance this comes and keeps selling off, I like it at twenty nine forty three. But any t anything below $3,000, I think, in my opinion, is an absolute gift. Amazon's a buy now. If it was a buy earlier in the year. It'll be a buy in the future. It doesn't matter. It's going up. So... Take this as an opportunity to get in some cheap, if you want to call it cheap, Amazon shares, because I do think it is that. Um, and this is the first stock that we're watching right now that is worth buying up out of the top three uh, today. Uh, next one's going to be Rocket. And this one was something that I was super pumped about. Uh, in the public account, I was able to grab some at 2209. What a what a freaking grab that was today. Um, Rocket seems to be something that is also a little bit at a price where it's kind of laughable. We're just off of uh, the price as to where it was in its original IPO debut. So uh, I, I think that Rocket is just going to continue to climb here. We have interest rates that aren't going to be climbing until 2023, according to the Fed. And um, the retail uh, uh, real estate is just going through the roof still. It's not slowing down anytime soon. It is a freight train at this point in time. I don't care if it's winter or not. Uh, Rocket's going to be, um, uh, people are going to look at it at 22 and be like, man, why didn't I get in? And I think that um, we're just going to be sitting here laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, what do you think about this one, big guy? You know I love Rocket. Um, it's, it's been setting up perfectly for us. In the chaos crew, we've been talking about 22 nonstop. Um, I feel confident above 20. I think there's just low risk on this on the low end. Um, but upside is huge, yep. especially if you have a longer time horizon. This is a no-brainer for me. Uh, what's crazy is that, you know, they blew earnings out of the water. And they're, I think it was $1.43 uh, share was the estimate and they did like $33. Some of them this is just absolutely insane. Yeah. So their forward guidance was like a dollar six a share. I think they're absolutely going to crush that too. I think it's going to be monster numbers again for them. Maybe not the same, but I wouldn't be surprised if it, it'd be pretty damn close. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, this 30, the 35 10 is where the uh, high is for this. And I, I just think that it gets there in a hurry, especially, um, as we start to see, uh, recover, you know, the road to recovery start to uh, increase here. We, we saw really good jobs number job numbers today, relatively speaking. Um, and so I think that on the road to recovery, Rocket's going to be one that's still very much in the mix, even after people start getting back into work and we see, um, you know, uh, 
a potential vaccine, which you've already heard that could be developed before the end of the year. So there's just a lot of good things going in, in Rocket's favor. And to your point, I think the risk uh, uh, outweighs or the reward outweighs the risk here. And I like Rocket a lot. I was super pumped to get it at 2209. If it comes back down there or even below 22. I'll be adding to that for sure. And lastly, I'm going to let you take the lead on this one. And it's going to be Intel because you like Intel a lot. Um, and uh, it kind of explain your reasoning as to why you think Intel is a good buy here right now. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a, this is another classic example of where you can not like a stock, then like a stock, depending <laughs> on the price levels. Um, I like the stock at these price levels do i like the company no i'm still an i'm still an nvidia fan if you're talking about the absolute long term but it's at a level that i just can't ignore can't ignore intel anymore sorry my voice is whoa 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 (laughs) excuse me um (laughs) it's just at levels we can't ignore so if you look at the fundamentals like we talked about offline nvidia and the competitors right all-time highs keep running keep moving well, you ask yourself, why is it down here? So that's my first question. Late July, they had, um, what was it, like delays in one of their chips yep. in launch, and that caused the drop. Yeah. Okay, fine. But now I think it's just insane. When you look at the fundamentals, it's down over 20%. And to me, it doesn't necessarily need to be a 52-week highs, but if it can, can maybe fill half that, you're sitting pretty. So I think there's huge upsides. Um their PEs at nine, yeah. nine. Yeah, that's pretty so insane. It's it's insane. So Intel, I think it's still a good company. Their projections are the exact same. They haven't changed, so that should be good. And so I, they need to perform next earnings. I expect um, them to come with something between now and then to get this thing moving. Um, but what were we saying? The the lows. Back in March, we're at forty three dollars. Uh, we're only seven dollars above that right now. Forty three dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So again, risk reward. Intel definitely a stock that I think you could swing and make some good money on, leading up to the earnings, and then just take that those profits and then put them in Nvidia. Yep. <laughs> and there you have it. Those are the top three stocks that we uh, have as a buy right now. And welcome to everybody else into uh, Only Chaos. Uh, we, this is something uh, we uh, decided to just do real quick before uh, as we let everybody roll in. Uh, but we got tons of stuff to talk about in today's show. Uh, we're talking about... Um, uh, the stock pick of the day. We also have uh, the TikTok Oracle deal to, to work through. We have um, Snowflake IPO that uh, we just, I mean, Chris and I just absolutely laughed at yesterday. thought it was quite hilarious as the, the, all of the reactions we saw. So we're going to be talking about that as well as something to consider uh, instead of uh, Snowflake. And then getting into some watch list updates for the Chaos Crew and uh, maybe potentially talking about that Palantir I- IPO or the Tesla Battery Day. We'll see how much time we have left towards the end of the show. Show, but welcome guys and welcome to the chaos crew if you guys are just joining us right now and you're wondering why you can't chat in the in the uh in the live stream chat well click the join button next to subscribe uh that'll be that'll bring you into the chaos crew where everybody you see here is a part of and they get a daily watch list along with uh transparent uh or access to the public portfolio, uh, all kinds of secret live streams. You want to be a part of that? It's a really sweet deal, four ninety nine a month. You can't beat it. Click the join button, become part of the crew. We'd love to have you. Um, so what's going on, everybody else? Let's check in. What's up, Blade Runner? What's up, Mike? Uh, Mike Media, Tan. Good to see you. Claudia is uh, rearranged her work schedule today for us. So certainly appreciate appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, and uh, everybody else. So uh, getting on to the first thing, uh, first order uh, of business here is the stock pick of the day. And w- w- what else is it other than Tesla, right? So we're going to be talking about Tesla right now. And this is something that I guess maybe you want to gloat about a little bit, Christian, as, as I see here in the notes <laughs> about your prediction on this one just on Tuesday. Just on Tuesday. You were ragging on me. Don was ragging on me. (laughs) Chaos crew was ragging on me. And I said then I was going to pull the clip. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to pull the clip. So I just pulled the script. (laughs) So this is what I said verbatim. I said, I want people to remember what just happened. We had a lot of people who were about to jump off the ledge. Whole accounted, whole accounted it. 
and abandoned the fundamental. This stock is no different than any stock. Feel free to take profits at any time. If you need to go back, it's 38 minutes and 10 seconds to 38 minutes and 49 seconds. That's exactly where it was. <laughs> and I got shit on by Brad. And the point was, it's a stock. It can go up. It can go down. And so you got to take profits. You didn't listen. I took profits, people. So anyways, um, 420 was my prediction. Uh, no, it wasn't my prediction. But I said, how cool would it be if on Tuesday, 420 was the number it was going to be at? That's not technically my prediction. But uh, maybe Elon's pulling some strings. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> Tom Franz says you take that back. <laughs> it's not just the stock. <laughs> um, just wanted to check in with you guys. So I, I was kind of curious about this too, Don. Don said he's not getting notifications for the stream. I thought maybe that that was happening as well because – Usually we have a hell of a lot more people uh, waiting in, and and, and maybe Ooh. maybe we're starting to suck here. I mean, I, that could be a, a very good possibility that this show is just ter that terrible that people aren't showing up. But <laughs> I have reason to believe that there's a lot more people that love us. And so if you guys did not get a notification, I don't know what's going on there. It's not uh, it's not like it's dead. It's not like it's unlisted or anything. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. But we'll let some people roll in. Um, to the 96 of you that are in here, though, welcome. Uh, and Steve King with the 49.99 donation. Appreciate Woo. it. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, give us a good old Ric Flair. Woo! Uh, I'm a man of my work. Made $2,300 on FedEx Swing. Thanks, fellas. That's awesome. Yeah, FedEx was a fantastic play earlier in the week. We loved it. Uh, it, it worked out exactly how we uh, expected it to. It was just, oh, man, what a, what a move on that thing. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me wrap up something because I want to give a thought on more of a serious note regarding the Tesla conversation. Yeah. Uh, we created the chaos. The chaos crew is meant to be a community, not a, Hey, listen to Brad, yeah. right? Like we help each other. We sort of put each other. And one of the things that you talk about a lot is we want people to think for themselves and make decisions for themselves, even unpopular ones. And you and I spoke about a week ago where I was like, you know what? I need to, I need to be more firm and like just saying what I think and what I believe. And that's what we want for everybody. It's hard when everybody else is saying, I was looking at somebody's uh, comment section for a Tesla video where they were predicting prices to five, six, seven, eight. No one said below like 450. Yeah. And, and it's easy to get caught up in the hype. And we want people to think on your own, take all this stuff into account, but make a decision for you, even if it's the unpopular one. Right. So that's my hope for everybody. And I know you feel the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we come into this, you know, uh, as just regular guys, just like you, uh, or gals. Um, but, and so like, we don't, we don't want to make it seem as if we know any better than anybody else, but we have been doing this for a while. We got some experience under our belts. And so we just kind of share our experiences and what we think it might happen. Most of the time we get it right. And in fact, a couple of people, I put out the, the Tesla video, uh, from Tuesday, got a lot of heat from putting it out today as, uh, it did end up dipping down. But the thing of it is, is that like, I always try to be very open and honest about when I get things wrong and when I get things right. But I will say that most of the time we're right, uh, but it doesn't mean that we're perfect. And so that with, with all of that and understanding all of that, you just got to take it with a, with a, you know, grab different sources, not just here. This isn't the end all be all. There's plenty of other sources you can grab from YouTube or wherever uh, to gain some uh, knowledge and experience. And we encourage you to, to do that as well. But, Obviously, this should be your home to be to be completely fair. So this is the best place to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, anyways, uh, no, I, I think that Tesla is going to be. Is, if this was a really good opportunity, tomorrow should be a good day. I I would think uh, for Tesla. But let's. I mean, to be fair, I, with uh, uh, I had a five day running streak, and it. it it doesn't surprise me that it did pull back, but to be be honest, like it has remained well above four hundred dollars a share, and, and given where it came from at three hundred eight, and just three days ago at three hundred sixty, um, it, it's barely pulled back. So I think it's a great great little move. Um, maybe if you want to pick up some more shares, I think this we see a nice move to four hundred fifty plus leading into Tuesday, which will be battery day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had an order in, didn't, I just missed the order. I had three orders, Apple, Amazon, and uh, <laughs> Tesla just missed them. Only one, my MGM actually hit, which is okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just missed uh, Tesla by a few bucks. Um, but I was already in on Tesla. 
so I'm good. Don't you hate that though? I, I've done that so many times where I set an order and then it just it just barely bounces. You know, it gets just close to it, whether it's a couple dollars. I've even had it as close to about a quarter or so, uh, and it just keeps on keeps on running. But man, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, and it makes you – that's the head game. Because right. the next yes. time, yeah. do you stick to it and don't allow the emotion or do you push it up a little bit? Yeah, so, yeah. No, it was good. Speaking of being right most of the time, we've been right on a lot of things. Hell yeah, man. Re- I mean – Recently. We've been fucking crushing it. Excuse the language, well, me, but, like, I mean, we have just – like, the watch list has been on freaking fire, and uh, I, I feel like it's been going a little bit unnoticed. It has. It has been on fire. <laughs> well, now Steve Steve showed us some that's love. That's true. That's true. Steve did show us some love. We got we got some cheerleaders in there for sure. Absolutely. But uh, our, our people know what's up, and I hope. So today on the watch list, the five we had on today, full transparency, we had CVS, Stitch Fix. Did we have Penn? Yes. We had Penn on Penn there, was right? on there, yep. Penn was on there, Amazon, and then what was the fifth one? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can pull it up. They all freaking ran, except for CVS, I think. So four out of five. Well, no, because I'll, okay, here we go. So, yeah, so um, Salesforce. Oh, that's right. Which we'll be getting to as well. Yep. Um, But, I mean, Penn, my point about the thing we were really right on, we'll get to in the TikTok deal, we were spot on (laughs) with with the Oracle TikTok response and right? pen national and pen national we were talking about pen national earlier today about just how this thing keeps ripping yeah so pen national and i heard somebody in the chat put something up there but how is uh where is it at now because it got up to 10 percent. pen Seven- national yeah it was as high as 74 73 today and this is something that we've been talking about well below um I mean, in the 40s, we've been just loving on the stock for the last several weeks and months. Um, and, uh, you know, sitting at, at 72.87 right now, it's still up 7.5%. This is something that we talked about right before, about an hour before the bell. And I mean, it was uh, sitting at $65 then. So you could have made an easy 10% plus if you had uh, been a part of the watch list this morning and gotten in on pen. I mean, it was just, and right now on the, uh, one hour, it looks to be uh, perhaps uh, developing here a little bit of a bull flag. So we might see a run into the close here on Penn National as well. Yeah, I'm interested to see how tomorrow is because, I mean, we we basically said verbatim on Sunday, we believe with Barstool Bets, this will run into Friday. Yep. And um, now the more I'm reading on it, um, it's a soft launch. Yeah. So I'm actually like – I'm not at, at, mad at anybody that wants to hold on to it because tomorrow's not like a huge day. Yeah. But um, pen swings like everything else. I'd probably take a, if you made a ton of money, I'd probably take a little bit off, off the table, but I'd hang on to it because I think this weekend will be a good weekend for sports. Um, I mean, the next couple weekends, we got the NBA finals coming up. Yep. Football's back in full swing. Um, so. I imagine this is still going to do well. It just it it just does have a propensity to drop. Um, just know that it's going to move just like kind of Tesla does with the big swings. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's super volatile. It's crazy to imagine this thing was at three dollars back in in late March, That's and now insane. sitting at seventy two to eighty one. Uh, unbelievable That's move. Insane. I I one hundred percent believe in Barstool and what they have going on, and I think that's going to be the biggest cash cow for Penn national. And I, I mean, it's hard to believe that it's hard to picture this, not at a hundred dollars soon. Um, just given everything they have going on, but, um, especially when you compare it to something like DraftKings, which I think Penn national is a better hold than DraftKings is, even though DraftKings is, is wild as well. Yeah. The, the ability to monetize the online gaming and then, um, DraftKings, DraftKings is just in a tougher spot, and we put this in the watch list where DraftKings and FanDuel are spending money for sponsorship, visibility, advertisement to hope people come, whereas Barstool spent money to acquire a community that is there, Yeah, which I think from a business model perspective is so much smarter. It's it's the best move they could have done, and honestly – it's, it's a classic example of a company that 
you have a company on one end that's using a traditional approach and Penn's thinking the future. Right. This is what you do in the future. Like advertising marketing is totally different now. And you either think like an old head or you think like a millennial. And this is what it's going to be moving forward. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, very forward thinking company. And, you know, they're going to be volatile, but it's going to be awesome uh, to just watch this continue to grow. Uh, real quick, uh, welcome to level two, Sam, getting uh, access to the portfolio. Certainly appreciate that, as well as Bratz with a $30 donation. He said, I've had a great week so far, up over 8K on the week, FedEx, Tesla, Snow, and Adobe. Nice, nice job, man. Um, Got some big balls for that snow. I know he's he's in the uh, mentorship though too. Brad's is all around, uh, uh, just super fan. I feel like uh, so really happy to uh, have your support, my man. Uh, you, you're all right for a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. Uh, <laughs> is that a short on snow or no? Then there was no on. there was no available shares to short on snow. Trust me, if there were, I would be all over that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we let's get into that by the way so snowflake ipo that's the next order of business um we can talk about that i was this was just the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen um coming out of you know as far as the ipo is concerned this went open up at what 124 125 was the expected uh um uh, starting price when uh, trading got started and then it jumped up all the way up to $319 and I can only feel for the poor soul that got it at $319 as it's sitting here at 227 down 30% from those highs. That's just, God, that's going to suck. I don't know if we see that for a while. <laughs> I know they're crazy. Um, <laughs> we knew it was going to go off. I didn't think it was going to go off like this. I mean, that was insane. Uh, and originally it was like 75 was a high end estimate for the IPO. Buffett's name gets attached. Salesforce names get attached. That pushes up. Yep. And then it even blows that out of the water. But we knew it was going to, it was going to go crazy. Yeah. We knew it was going to go nuts. I just don't know if we knew it was going to go that nuts. It was up 150% at one time yesterday. That's it's yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Hype train. Like you said, if you could short this thing, I don't know. Yeah, I, what do your earnings have to look like? Like, what do your we talk about IPOs and those first? What do your earnings have to look like? Yeah, I mean, this is literally is just because Warren Buffett and Salesforce has has their name on it, and that's that's the only reason. And we talked about this um, on Tuesday about how Snowflake actually is, uh, you know, their their revenues are increasing, which is great, but their their cash spend is is increasing much faster than the revenue is, and that usually doesn't spell. Um, that usually isn't a recipe for, for a good, good fundamentals. And so I just, I don't know. I can't really kind of wrap my head around this one at, at this price, even, even sitting at 226. I mean, when this first started to like get some attention, it was just, it, it, what did they say? 75, maybe $75, $65 is what they were expecting the original IPO price to come in at. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe even lower than that. But, and, and now with it sitting at 227, just, just seems ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and, we have two stocks that two two topics that we're going to give you stocks that we'd be watching, and this seems fairly obvious uh, to some. But if you want in on Snowflake, why not go in on Salesforce? Big, we're big fans of Salesforce. We're big fans of the company. They're industry leader. They're proven. Their models proven, and they're best of class. They got a stake in um, Snowflake, so I think as Snowflake goes, you should see. Uh, Salesforce go, especially when there's big news. Um, so I'm, I would edge my bets with Salesforce. Yeah. I mean, and look, and it just got added to the Dow and it got added there for a reason. Yeah. It, it's, it's on a pretty decent pullback right now, sitting at two forty three fifty five 55 uh, as we speak here. And it's, it's almost down to a level of support where I would even consider buying it. No, as it would be a no brainer for me right around two thirty nine, two forty. 240. So we're getting close to there. So if we start seeing it there, I may end up adding to this or, or, or scooping it up rather. So, uh, yeah, I think this is a better option if you're looking to get into it, or if you feel like you missed a boat on snow or you don't want to touch it. Um, Brian Lynn, welcome to the chaos crew, man. Uh, happy to have you here too. Uh, C Mike says I made three and a half, three and a half K on snow and got the fuck out. <laughs> well, so, um, um, but Hey, you know, uh, oh yeah. Jay, Jay, Fro uh, was it frog or something or whatever had a, uh, IPO Jay yesterday. Frog. Jay frog. Yeah. Had a IPO. Some people got burned on that big time. So, 
Uh, Don says, I think, uh, I think this is more of a, like a Tesla like play. Uh, they're losing hand over fist, but, uh, but, uh, they have less, uh, what is that? But less and less quickly. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, but it, and I'm no, sure it'll have another, no, that's not true. I'm sure it'll probably, probably not true. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll probably have a, uh, another, a bounce in it, but I, I feel, I feel like this is going back to down to the one hundreds at some point. You can't compare this to that's, that's, that's not a great analogy. You can't compare this to Tesla. This, this is an IPO. This is a company that's sure, sheer hype. Yeah. Tesla has something to back and, like no, I don't, I don't know. Don, I love you, bro, but that's not. Great analogy. <laughs> and they're not losing less and less money. They went up because Buffett was Buffett's name. Let's be real, Buffett's name and hype train. And yeah, that's a yeah. horrible recipe. Yeah, yeah. That's more like Nikola. <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway literally made a million dollars in, in in less than five minutes yesterday, or billion dollars uh, in less well, than five. Yeah, Brett's made a good point. He said Snow was all about institutional traders making money. That's what an IPO is, man. Yeah. That's just the reality of it. That's like somebody saying, hey, man, can I? Uh, you want to invest $10,000? Brad did. So then I invest $10,000 without you know, <laughs> yeah. seeing anything about the company. Right, right. They, they're making their money. Um, I agree, Brats, 100%. Yep. So, I mean... So uh, I guess the next question would be, so what would, what would we do with as far as Snowflake is concerned? And, you know, I, again, I'd, I'd like to go back to the to the Rocket reference and we look at something like Rocket where it had a similar type move right out of the gate. If we go and look at this on the on a daily and kind of see what, what happened here, a huge move up over the first two days, and then it just came crashing back down nearly to where uh, the IPO price uh, originally was at, uh, where it opened at at 1750. And so then before it finally started to go back up. Now, I think that is probably the more than likely scenario. And we could even go back and look at Zoom. Zoom did a, a very similar thing. Uh, Uber, Lyft, all these did a, they, they all do this where there's a lot of excitement and people have a lot of FOMO, but then it sells off. You have the institutions that taken, that are taking some profit. And I'd have to look at to see when the lockup period ends for, uh, snow, but usually it's, it's six months out from the IPO. Uh, but that's also something to be cognizant of, not just their earnings, but that lockup period. And depending on how many shares get unlocked at that point could also play a factor. We saw that with BYND a couple of years ago where it just fell on its face after running up from 45 bucks all the way to two something. <laughs> So, I mean, I, there's just so much hype surround around it. And this is why we don't really like just buying right, right out of the gate with IPOs. We'd rather be smart about it and just kind of wait for the dust to settle and then, then figure out what to do from there. Yep. So, um, all right. What else we got, my man? What's next? So we have, um, we have, we could talk airlines. We could talk TikTok Oracle. TikTok Oracle deal. Let's do it. TikTok Oracle. So we said this. Everybody got excited. Microsoft backed out, or Microsoft announced that they were no longer in the running for the TikTok deal, left Oracle, and then everybody goes crazy. And we said the first thing was, read the press release. It doesn't say the deal is done. It doesn't yeah. say the deal is approved. It says they came to an agreement. That was the first red flag. We caught that. But here's the thing that we really caught, that, that out there, I'll give us some credit. Nobody was saying. Yeah. Since when does this this administration concede to demands they make? And we said, watch out. This wasn't what uh, Trump agreed to. So the details came out today, which was Oracle was going to get a, a minority stake, a 20% stake in the company, and they were going to be a partner. Right. That is not what the administration said. Now, I'm not saying whether it's going to get proved or not, but what we were worried about was like, this administration doesn't show that it's one that concedes on demand. Yeah. So I find it hard to believe that as it stands, that this is going to get approved. I do believe it's going to get approved. I don't think it will look like this. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it'll look like this either. Um, I do have some Oracle, but it's more of a risk reward type of deal. If it yeah. uh, doesn't go through, then I don't imagine the reaction is going to be all that great. It won't be good, but I don't think it's going to fall as far as a lot of people might think. And I also think that the upside here, there's, there's more, um, there's more to, to look at for, to, for the upside when it, do, if, and when it does go through, which I think it does uh, eventually that we should see a really nice pop out of this. I mean, when the original initial reaction was all the way up to 66 bucks, almost 67, I think that's more uh, of a type of reaction. We'll probably end up seeing once everything officially goes through. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I think that as more details come out about this Oracle TikTok deal, the less sexy it looks. Yeah, the in the I agree with you on Oracle. The I think if you're in Oracle, stay. I don't think it's going to fall that far because it didn't run up that much. Yeah. It went up like 5%, nothing crazy, right? Um, and it's come down a little bit. So I think you hold on to it. I think you let this play out because the upside is greater than the downside, and I do think it'll get done one way or another. Yeah. Um, but just like Salesforce, I think if you're a little bit concerned or hesitant about playing Oracle, they also announced that Walmart was in on the deal with Oracle, and so Walmart's now in the running – um, and last time I checked, it wasn't moving too much. So I actually picked up Walmart on the same idea as Salesforce. Like, for Walmart's a great company. And so we saw Microsoft announce they moved out and it barely nudged the stock. Right. And so even if it doesn't go through for Walmart, I think it's also a safe bet as well. Um, if you're not comfortable with Oracle or if you feel like Oracle moved up already. Um, but Walmart also has their Walmart Plus, which just released. So they have a lot of good things around the corner and their recession-proof stock. So for all those reasons, I think either one of those work for this deal. Yeah, this drives me a little bit crazy. I haven't done enough uh, research on this, and maybe this could be my own ignorance, but what the hell is in it for Walmart? And why would they go after something like TikTok anyway? Bro, is it Walmart? I was thinking about Walmart today. I'm like, is Walmart let, like, round away girl that, like, is going from guy to guy? It's like, <laughs> yo, Microsoft, like, let's go. Let's, let's get together. How like, you Microsoft. doing? So, like, yeah, like, you know, TikTok doesn't like me, so I need to partner up. And then get then Microsoft's like, nah, I'm out. Right. Microsoft's like, yo, Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Yo, Walmart's a hoe. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it sure seems like it. I don't know what the Waltons are doing over there, but um, I just doesn't. it doesn't make sense in the line of business that they're in. But, I mean, who knows? They could be going into uh, uh, into a different direction or, or a new direction. I don't know. Um it, it could be um, something well, that they use it, for uh, they, something they use for marketing. I guess I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But Tan says uh, they have the second largest database in the world, which that doesn't surprise me. But it, no, I did not know that. That's a little fun fact. Thanks, Tan, for that one. Yeah, and think about like Amazon. People think about Amazon. Uh, we talk about Amazon. We talk about Apple, and even Microsoft. Microsoft had an incredible transition into cloud services. And into higher margin positions. And so when you think about those three companies, they're shifting away from the physical. Yeah. Amazon, people don't talk about their cloud services, but like the AWS for Amazon is huge. Yeah. And so maybe this is the shift for Disney or not Disney with Walmart because Walmart now doing the Walmart Plus, which is similar to Prime. Maybe they are trying to shift and provide opportunities that are higher margin because I mean, you're a low cost provider in stores like brick and mortar. Like everything about that is yeah. unsexy. Right. I mean, that's probably why Walmart hasn't exactly been a sexy stock up until this year, really um, for a lot of reasons. But you know, I, I, if you, even if you take TikTok out of it, Walmart's still very much uh, a buy here, especially as much as it's come down since we had the correction at the beginning of the month. September is always a weird month of the year. Um, and so I think that we're really starting to see that it's bounced off of a pretty decent support at uh, 134, 135 area. And, you know, if you're looking to get into Walmart, this could be a really good buy. It, it doesn't look like it's going to be um, uh, coming, breaking through that support at all. I mean, we can see several times where it's, it's come down and bounced off of that. So this could be another good opportunity for Walmart just from a technical pers perspective as well. Um, the, well, the, the, and we're going to pull this clip too. It's unsexy September. I'm going to take all the unsexy <laughs> stuff. I'm taking CVS, which is below 10 PE and is going to kill it when the vaccine comes. I'm taking Intel. Intel I'm yeah. taking Walmart. And you guys can take all the other stuff you're getting all hype about. The Nikolas, the snowflakes, it's all that stuff. Oh, my God. Where is Nikola today? That piece of shit. Um, it was actually up early in the day. Oh, man. Maybe this could be a good short. This might be a good unsexy short. Unsexy September, people. Yep. Give me what you got. <laughs> All right. Uh, next on the list is, uh, oddly enough, the watch list. Um, so let's, we talked, we just, we touched on the watch list earlier. Uh, Penn National, we talked about a lot already. That was on the list. And just to re recap here, for those of you who have coming in a little bit later, we do see, we got some people rolling in now. So we're up to 237, 39 likes though, which is pretty shitty. So get the like, get the likes up. 
Um, hopefully that'll probably get this out a little bit more. I don't know what happened with the uh, notifications today, but I guess nobody got them. I went and double checked to make sure I had it public, and I do. It's just YouTube being YouTube. But um, <laughs> uh, Penn National was on the watch list today, and that was incredible. Um, we had CVS on the watch list as well. Um, and this was one that you kind of uh, brought to the table, and I, I wasn't really looking at too much, uh, Christian. So give us uh, some reasons as to why you thought CVS was a good pick today. And uh, we can see that it went, it had a pretty good day so far. It's up only 1%, but it, you know, given the fact that it's CVS, it's actually a pretty decent move. Yeah. Um, so when I put it in the watch list, um, the, the key things I focused on, and we're trying to find upside. Yeah. So um, it had shown up a while ago, and the key for me is the Minute Clinic. And when you think about flu season, where do you go? You yep. go to a place like CVS. And Target. And so so uh, just, a, just a side note, uh, CVS uh, uh, bought all Target pharmacies. So if you go to a Target pharmacy, that's CVS as well. Wow, I didn't know that. So yep. that's even more more fodder. So um, one of the things that the CEO talked about was their infrastructure and investing in that minute clinic and growing it and, and the efficiency. So when an opportunity like a vaccine comes, people are really hyping vaccine and who's going to be the company that makes it. But what about distribute it? And what's the easiest way to do it? You're going to go to companies like CVS who have a wide footprint and could easily distribute that. So I think that you look at a company that's profitable, that does well fundamentally, and I think it's at levels that um, are a good buy level. And then you add this fuel to the fire, if that vaccine does go through, they're going to be a part of that program. So I believe that this is a great opportunity to scoop some up, stash some away, and, and it, it seems that this is imminent. That's what I put. Like, this seems it's imminent that this vaccine is going to go through in Q4 at the very latest Q1 of 2021. But I think Q4, we're going to start hearing the news, and that is going. I think it's going to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we have a little bit to go before this actually breaks out of a downtrend as far as the uh, technicals are concerned. I think that we get this up above 59.50, closer to $60 a share. And we'll be officially over a uh, a downtrend or a the a break of this trend uh, over the last uh, two three weeks or so. And um, as Bratz actually brought, or no, not Bratz, uh, Mike. B, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing it. Cloudy is asking, uh, what makes it more attractive versus Walgreens? And I'm going to throw uh, right in right aid in here as well. Um. So as far as I'm concerned, I think you're okay with any one of those. So like, to me, when I look at the fundamentals, um, like if you look at PE, which is a common metric to look at, uh, Walgreens is, I believe it's around uh, 40 and CVS is like around nine or 10. So I'm not mad at either one of those. I'm not a big fan of Rite Aid's model in general. I really like Walgreens they manage their money well. So I'll say go either one of those. If you feel more confident in Walgreens, um, go for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, the the closer we get to flu season, I think the more attractive that all of them are going to become. So uh, this is the one that we just decided to pick out. But uh, Vinjay, welcome to the Chaos Crew, my man. Happy to have you. Um, and so uh, we had CVS. We covered Penn. What was the other ones we had on here on the watch list this morning? Just to reiterate. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, just to reiterate, guys, if you're curious as to what watch list we're talking about, we're talking about the uh, one as part of the chaos crew. So each morning we put out a watch list for all of our folks that you're seeing in the chat here. And uh, these are the ones we're going over real quick, real quick, just to kind of show you how, how well it actually ended up working out. And this happens on a regular basis. So go ahead and shoot me with the next one, man. Yeah, so we covered all of them except for Stitch Fix. Ah, yes. This is one that I have loved since August. I'm sorry, April, uh, when it was down into the mid-teens, around $15 a share, now sitting at twenty eight twenty six, And we have earnings next week, correct? Yes, we do on Tuesday, I believe, with Nike. And this one, on as far as the charts concerned, um, has a pretty decent cup and handle pattern going on here. If you uh, go to the four hour chart as well as the, the daily, this usually ends up representing a pretty decent bullish type of setup. And so if um, 
Stitch Fix ends up having really good earnings or maybe even leading up to earnings, we could see a breakout over, up, up over this cup and handle pattern. This could be a really nice setup uh, to, to get in some Stitch Fix. And this was on the watch list as well today. And it actually had a really nice move um, from about 27 all the way up to $29 a share right out of the gate this morning. So this is another pretty nice pop this morning uh, on the watch list. Yeah, and you you definitely called this out. I mean, you love Stitch Fix personally. Um, uh, this shirt is actually Stitch Fix, to be to be quite honest with you. <laughs> but they were first. And I, won't, I don't want to say they're first of the game. They weren't first, but they were one of the first movers. Um, early on it, during this lockdown, they got a little bit of heat because they didn't capitalize properly, and I think they had some logistical challenges. Yeah. But – it just got beat down too far, mm -hmm. and I think the model's great. I think they'll address their issues, um, and I'm looking forward to earnings. Um, we'll talk Sunday about how we play them or not on Stockwatch Sunday, but um, it, it's been great for us so far. Yeah, definitely um, take a look at this one or, or keep this one in mind as we go into Stockwatch Sunday because you'll probably end up seeing this one up there uh, Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time if you're just joining us for the first time. We uh, go over the top, top stocks we're watching throughout the next week every uh, Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So, yep, there is the watch list. Uh, I think we freaking killed it today on that on that front. It was just it was just awesome. But, you know, it's just typical for, for the KS crew. Yeah, so um, I know we have – we also want to get some questions in. Yeah. Um, we plan on talking about Planter IPO on Sunday, Stock Watch Sunday. Um, and we do plan on talking about Tesla battery day. So if somebody has specific questions, I say, we just save those for stock watch Sunday works for me. Talk about our airlines conversation. Yeah. And then go into questions. Okay. That works. So, so go ahead. I'll segue. Cause our Evans, uh, you, you asked a question about Southwest. So this will be us covering that topic. Um, but this is one where you wanted to talk about, we're both in, airline plays so why don't we talk about what you're in first yeah so um i'm in jet blue and you know not too many particular reasons uh why i like this one over something like southwest or even spirit and even delta but i like jet blue because they have a really good balance sheet here's the other thing jet blue was a pioneer in making sure that people were going to be safe during travel as far as the rona was concerned they were the first ones that really kind of implemented uh, the type of um, disinfecting measures that uh, none of the other airliners were taking place or, or were take, putting into effect, I should say. And so uh, this kind of brought a lot of attention to them. The airlines are starting to come back. We're starting to see increasing demand. Um, we've already started to see that with um, uh, Southwest. And I like Southwest a lot. It was a toss-up for me. But with this smaller account, I decided to go with a cheaper stock so I could get some more shares uh, of it. And so... Um, was able to get in and average in at 1297, sitting at 1296. Looking at this on the chart, I really like this. Uh, yesterday's 1320 break was really, really important for me. And I think that we start to see this bounce even more. I will add the JetBlue as we as it comes down to potentially 1250. That's going to be some uh, an area where I would consider averaging down a little bit. But if we uh, uh, break this out a little bit, you can see that 1320 is a really good spot for it. Um, as it just barely broke over there yesterday, if we see a sustained break over that again uh, coming up in the next few days, then I think that this is going to continue to move towards those uh, pre-Rona highs that we saw or even just the summertime uh, highs we saw at 1570. That would be an amazing move for this one, but I like JetBlue a lot, and Christian is a huge fan, and we're both a huge fan of uh, Southwest. I've been a huge proponent of this for a lot of reasons, and I'll give mine, and then Christian, you can give yours, but my biggest reason as to why I like Southwest is a, their balance sheets, and B, is their break-even load factor. And if you guys don't know what the break-even load factor is, it literally is the amount of people it takes for a, each flight to break even on as far as uh, profits concerned. And um, Southwest is right there at like 70% capacity, means that they will break even on that flight. All the other ones are close to 80, and American Airlines has the worst. It's close to 90% on American Airlines. So um, Southwest has the best possible outcome as far as recovery is concerned and in the quickest way and so um christian uh actually happened to look at their cash burn rates and notice that those were starting to improve as well yeah those are down 15 percent off projections and so 
you knew at some point you were going to get into airlines. Yeah. And um, I think that the airlines are going to be a tough go for the next couple of years. But when we reopen, I fully anticipate this thing, uh, especially vaccine news or re- whatever it is, right? We yeah. already started to reopen, but like vaccine news, airlines are going to move up. So that's the play I'm trying to play here. And so um, you look at a company Southwest, I'm big on cash flow, daily cash burn rate. To me, if it's down by 15%, then that signals, okay, we're moving in the right direction. And so now I feel comfortable taking, you know, moving in. I got lucky where I got in yesterday. I sold out. The only reason I sold out is because I wanted to take profits for today. So if we didn't drop today, I probably would have still been in it. So I don't want to say I planned on taking profits, um, but I'll get back in it. I think downside is 10%, but I think you have 20, 20, 25% upside on this thing, which seems like it's becoming a theme for today. (laughs) And we talk about when this tech, um, this tech keeps trying to sort itself out, um, stocks at all time highs, maybe start shifting a part of your, a portion of your portfolio and considering high upside stocks that have been beaten down. And so Southwest to me is the play. I do like JetBlue. I do like where it's at. Um, so either one makes sense. Uh, I just Southwest and be more boy. Southwest has a hub in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, if we can get Southwest up over 43 bucks and have it sustained there, we should start to see a nice little uh, retracement back to uh you know, the pre Rona highs at like 58, 83. And that's kind of where it was sitting at before the crash. Um, and so, yeah, again, there's plenty of upside here, about 20 to 25% upside to to Southwest. And even if it starts to come back down, the, it, it maybe only comes down, I don't know, 5%, 10% at most. It seems to be where the uh, next area of support could be. If this actually starts breaking back down, be around $35, $36 a share, which really isn't that much compared to the amount of upside we have on this. And we're starting to see things improve. And as we're looking towards uh, recovery stocks, you know, it's hard not to ignore um, the, the airliners. Now, one thing that I will caution you guys on, we saw, you know, there's a lot of uh, people who are drawn to the uh, cruise stocks. And I just want to touch on this real quick because Carnival um, it took a huge hit today. Um, they are suspending uh, um, or, uh, cruises, sorry, uh, into 2021. Now it, they, they keep pushing it back and pushing it back. And now we're officially into 2021. And this is something that I would 100% avoid. There's stocks that you're going to want to take a look at as far as recovery is concerned. And you want to make sure that there are companies that have enough cash on hand or have the ability to recover quickly. And, Carnival Cruise and really all the Carnival uh, stocks are not going to be it. I've been saying this since day one of the crash that these that Carnival is not going to be the play that you want to get into, and I still stand by that. The amount of debt that they have is two to three times their market cap. I mean, just think about that number real quick. Their number, uh, their market cap is uh, six billion dollars. It was six billion dollars somewhere around there. Um, and I'm sure it's less than that now. And, and you think about the amount of debt they have and the debt that they do have is convertible debt. So those are going to be more shares that get dumped into the stock. This will probably be coming back down to around $5 a share. I, I think that could certainly happen. I think it's very possible because they have to be able to convert that at some point. And so when those notes come due, it's going to be rough, uh, tough sledding for Carnival, especially if they continue to push this back. And they're just burning through cash every day without making a dime. Yeah, and uh, transitioning back to the airlines, uh, we wanted to mention Delta, which you did a video back when, way back when, where it was there was Delta and Southwest, which you were saying the airline stocks, and I think we lean towards Southwest now because Delta relies heavily on international, yep. more so than Southwest, far far more. Yeah, um, and so we both do like Delta. And I wanted to get C Mike and Claudia just asked about that, but Delta is a great company. Um, and again, I don't think you can go wrong with Delta, but I, I did want to get your feedback on, they announced how they did a leverage debt with their, um, with their buyback pro with their frequent flyer, um, miles mm-hmm. and American airlines, I think did this a couple of months ago. Like, what do you think about leveraging those flight miles, um, to, for debt? It sounds dangerous to me. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. 
I, I it's not something that I'm I'm a, a huge fan of, uh, and I think there's definitely some there's more down downside and more risk involved. But I think that at this point, they're 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 desperate to try to to keep themselves afloat, and they can't let go of any of their employees until is it is it this month or next month? Um, and so I think there's just there's a lot of risk involved with this, and I think the longer that uh, there's international travel bans, the more uh, moves of desperation they're going to be making here. So that's why, like we said, we like Southwest out of all of these. JetBlue is another really good one. Uh, really, any of the airlines that are focused on domestic travel right now, like your Spirit Airlines, that sort of thing, are going to be probably your better bets than to look towards um, stocks that – Ha- or you know, airline stocks that heavily rely on international travel. American Airlines, obviously, a big one. That's the worst one to get into, in my opinion. But Robin Hooders seem to love that one. Oh yeah, get they they love their they love uh, cruise liners too. I know. I'm buying cruise liners. <laughs> I don't get that at all. Uh, Forgotten we Glory, welcome to the Chaos Crew, my man. We got 313 concurrent oh, viewers in here, 73 likes. Let's see if we can get that up over 100 before the day's out. Um, what we got as far as uh viewer questions are concerned yeah let's get into these um brat said tesla's making a nice move uh claudia said delta's starting to pick up sounds like maybe the markets moving up maybe i'm uh, not watching bit. it right now uh, let's see i mean it's it's been kind of a boring day overall I had a pretty exciting uh first half of the day and then everything kind of settled out but let's take a look here um tesla's starting to move up a little bit yeah it's uh only down four percent on the day now and, um, I mean, it's not nothing, anything crazy, but yeah, it's starting to make a little bit of a move. Nice. Um, so thoughts on Nike. I know we're going to, that's going to definitely be one of the stocks on stock watch Sunday earnings are next Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, like Nike a lot. Oh, um, Nike is going to be a good one. We've always liked Nike. This is always one that seems to come out of any kind of, uh, recession, uh, just a much stronger company than before. This is actually something that has been on the Chaos Crew watch list since well under $100 a share. It's gone up as high as 120. It's on a de- decent, pretty pullback, pretty decent pullback, and I think I, I like it here at 116. The uh, earnings that are going to be coming up, I think, are going to be awesome. I agree. I think they're going to be awesome. Um, and we'll give you a little bit. Of, I'll give you a little bit of early information. Um, I'm probably going to hold through earnings. I think they're going to freaking crush it i think the news is going to be good um they are first off their product is just superior that to everyone and they do everything better everything is better quality um and then when you look at their systems and their infrastructure uh what they're doing with their nike id their e-commerce they just beautifully transition to the e-commerce and i think as a focal point and i think we're going to see those numbers through the freaking roof if you go on go on nike site try to buy some stuff a lot of it is sold out yep so i love nike my people and that goes for a Uh, lot of every a lot of things in e-commerce i mean i have to go i had to do some shopping for my sister my sister's getting married and they they want us all to wear uh chucks the converse all-star chucks and uh they're sold out i can't find them in my size they're sold out crazy yeah that's nike too yeah um, love me a good pair of chucks. All right. Uh, Monsor Balale. Balale. <laughs> I'm going to say Balale. Red Bear. Do you think we have more dip in Fang stocks? Um, there more dip to come. Damn. You know, that's a really good question. We talked about Amazon being a very clear buy here. Um, I, I say uh, that if it does, just continue to buy this because I think the reaction here is is just a bit too much. We're getting into over sold territory the only one that i'm a little bit leery on is facebook and we've been pretty vocal about that sitting at 250 but even now we're getting to a point to where facebook is getting a bit laughable as far as the price point here given where it's come from um i would just start accumulating positions here on facebook uh, netflix all the fang stocks it seems as if uh we're starting to get to points where it just seems a little bit oversold it right now um mike D, oh, I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're referencing, so I'm gonna skip that one. Uh, thoughts on Dupont? Dupont. Stickers, DD. I like Dupont a lot. We've seen a uh, pretty huge demand. 
and DuPont overseas, especially when it comes to, and this is weird, but exotic car paint has been a, a huge uh, shift for them. And that's what's caused DuPont to really kind of uh, go up uh, recently. But um, they have a lot of other stuff. I mean, they're in everything DuPont is. Um, we're, we're seeing uh, news come out as far as demand increasing for uh, their silicon uh, products as well. So, like, they're just, they're just a really good company. Um, and honestly, this is kind of a little bit of a late bloomer as far as um, uh, ones that are related to Rona and how they've been able to benefit from, from COVID-19. And so I think that this is definitely one to own. I think it's a little bit overbought at this point. I would wait for this to fall back below $60 before I would consider taking a, uh, a grab at this. But this is a really good company. Even if you got it here now, you probably could hold it and be just fine. Um, as you speak, there's a Facebook news flash that says they, they're they issuing new rules on internal employee communication. I'm telling you, like this isn't crazy, but the point is, they're going to be in, in the news a lot yep. about issues regarding this type of stuff. Yeah. And we've, t- we talked about that maybe what Tuesday, I think about how, and even mm-hmm. on Stockwatch Sunday, if I believe, um, if I recall, and I mean, this came down uh, and we've talked about leading into the election. This is probably going to continue to be, get beat down, but sitting at two fifty, I mean, it just seems like it's a bit silly. Um, now it's, it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous. So I would still think about, maybe starting to move it in on this 247 seems to be the next area of a potential support, but we always love Facebook overall. So I think that leading into the election, this might be a good opportunity to get some cheap Facebook shares because it's going to come back. And I think it comes back uh, like uh, really, really strong, probably into the first quarter of 2021. Uh, Landon L asked, what do you guys think about CWH with, with a swing into earnings? Had a big move last time and crushed earnings. Seems like a good spot to buy. To, so he grabbed some yesterday at 30. Uh, I think that Camping World is a strong stock for sure. I think that their next earnings are going to be awesome. My only thing is, is that we always look at stocks uh, and what their outlook is going to be. And I don't know how many people are going to be buying RVs in December. Just my just my thoughts on that. Mm-hmm. But I think that their earnings are going to be awesome. I'm not sure. I think we're probably going to see something like a rocket where, you know, the administration of rocket came out and said, hey, you know, things are probably going to slow down in the winter because people aren't buying houses in the wintertime. Same thing with RVs. But I think that they do crush it. I don't know if I would want to hold this through earnings, though. I couldn't agree with you more. They raised estimate. They did crush last earnings. They raised estimates, guidance, so they're going to have to do even that much more. Yeah, I find I, I echo your sentiments. I feel the exact same way. I'd be really hesitant to hold through earnings, at least take some off the table, in yeah. my opinion. Right. Um, but if you want to keep a few, hold on to a few. All right. So the next question is, um, Sony, Sony, man, late. <laughs> oh, Sony out. Sony's always here, a regular. Uh, Sony Red Bear, you think we'll see a green day tomorrow? Um, no. Usually on Fridays, we don't see any kind of crazy day, unless some sort of uh, significant catalyst comes out on the economy or whatever. Uh, Trump makes a, qu- a weird tweet that causes people to start buying. But uh, I think Fridays usually are typically uh, sell days, and we, we, see, we look for good. Oh, God. Uh, we look for good opportunities on, uh, for, for buying on Fridays, but I doubt we see uh, any kind of monster green day on a Friday. All right, this next question, uh, this is a good topic to bring up. It's regarding SWBI. And remember, folks, we give you the real, the good, the bad, the ugly. So Stuart Cash, Stuart Castro, (laughs) Cash number two. (laughs) (laughs) Cash number two um, asks, think SWBI is still a hold through elections? I do, um, but that's not to say that I didn't get this one entirely right. Um, this had a really strong move, and ever since the market kind of corrected itself at the beginning of the month, this thing has been getting hammered. I've been trying to average down a little bit, and I've averaged down as much as I want to or I care to. Uh, if this continues to come down, it's sitting at 1560, which is quite painful, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, I'm not down a, a, an absolute ton. It's not killing me. It's just annoying at this point. The selling has just been insane. It, it's been tw- two straight weeks of selling almost three straight weeks of selling at this point, And I just don't understand. Uh, but I do think that we see some sort of pop as we get into or get closer to um, the, the election. And 
in particular, if we see one of these presidential debates in, in talking about the issues of, um, you know, uh, of, uh, of guns and, and regulations and that sort of thing. And, you know, uh, we'll say that Joe Biden's probably going to come out and talk about, you know, how he plans on uh, restricting gun laws. Usually when we see that historically, you see some sort of debate or some sort of something that comes out um, and you'll see a pop. So that's kind of what I'm waiting on. I think that patience is going to pay off here, but if you can't afford the risk tolerance on this, or you can't, um, you can't afford the risk or your risk tolerance doesn't allow you to hold onto this. And obviously don't just sit here and, and take the pain, but uh, I think that it's going to be worth holding on to. Um, and we'll see a pop out of this before long. Mike D media black bear. Uh, glad you brought up GE. Cause that was actually one of the topics that we had mentioned. Uh, so much hype on GE. How are you guys feeling about GE Ford? GE has been something uh, that I actually put on the uh, Chaos Crew watch list um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, almost to the date, uh, and said that this one was going to be worth uh, accumulating into on the, in the $6 range, and we should see a nice little pop out of this before long. And sure enough, today we saw that uh, between yesterday and today, this has gone up a full dollar. It's about uh, 15% that this has moved already. We get this above 1720, 1730. We should start to see a move back up towards uh, $8 and beyond. I think that there's 720, 720. Yeah. What did I say? 17. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 720. Uh, I think that, you know, the, the, the upside here, there's plenty of it. Um, the, as airliners, uh, as we start to see increase in demand in airlines, this is, uh, stands to be a direct benefactor of that. So, um, I like GE a lot. It's not like we've <laughs> what unsexy September. This is another one. So I think this one, uh, is there's a lot of upsides to GE. I like it a lot. Under ten dollars, if you're looking for a good buy, I think I think that is. You know, GE got beat down in part because of, um, among other things, their GE aviation segment and their exposure to to aviation. It's a huge part of the uh, business. Yeah, and so um, so with that said, that's understandable. And I was asking, I was talking to Brad about, you know, it popped yesterday, ten percent, and then what was it like five percent up today? Yeah. And so, um, turns out that their cash flow is looking really good. And the CEO announced that, um, they're going to be profitable the second half of the, or the, towards the end of the year and the next two quarters. So those are looking good. Um, I think this is another option for, um, one maybe to put a little bit into, especially at these prices, uh, high upside. So G looks good. Yeah. Uh, good call the, on that too, Brad. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. The, the new CEO, ever since he's taken over, has really turned the ship around, and I like him a lot. And I think that he's gonna he's gonna uh, uh, do some really good things for GE. So, let me tell you something about GE. And I don't even know if you know this. Nobody knows this in the Chaos Crew. Um, I once dated a fine young lad, la- laddie. <laughs> I was gonna say, have you now? I, I'm lad. really really learning something today. <laughs> God damn. God damn. Woo. This is recorded on screen. <laughs> I'm going to pull this it's clip too. <laughs> um, but I, I, I dated this woman that worked for GE. Did you know that? No, I did not. They have a great management program. They have, <laughs> they have awesome talent they bring in. I don't even want to look at the comments. <laughs> uh, uh, and so the thing about that, uh, that was really surprising inside scoop here, people, did you know that SpaceX, um, Elon Musk's company, Elon Musk company, and Tesla, um, s- s- like I don't want to say steal, but recruit a lot of people from GE out of their management program. So they go out of college, they do their management training program, and a lot of them go to SpaceX. Did you know that? I did not. A lot of their talent is from GE, so they have the talent. To your point about the CEO, I think if you can leverage the talent they have. Um, this might be an exciting stock for years to come. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is one that you just kind of buy and you stick away in your long-term account and kind of forget about it and add to it every now and then. Um, when you got some money to throw at it, uh, geez, it's going to be fine. It's just going to take some, uh, 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 some, some patience. <laughs> you know, to water the, 
the seeds a little bit. Mike B says, I'm missing the Pat McAfee show for this, by the way. Bro, I certainly appreciate that. Mac- Pat McAfee is honestly somebody that I look up to. We're kind of like aspiring to be like. So I certainly appreciate it. I was listening to Pat McAfee before we came on to this show. So uh, that's, that's all t- he does. That's, that exactly. is all I do. I love Pat McAfee, but uh, I appreciate I'm it. I'm more of a, my man, man crush is more on Rogan. I love McAfee, but oh, yeah. Rogan and, uh, and Flagrant 2. Andrew Schultz. I'm a big Andrew Schultz fan as well. But uh, Ema said, nobody cares about GE. Tell us about your boyfriend. Was he cute? (laughs) (laughs) That's Uh, hilarious. That's hilarious. See, Mike, uh, we haven't talked about Clorox in forever. Any thoughts on Clorox? Worry if they might keep dropping if Corona eases up. I don't think the... I mean, the initial reaction, the knee-jerk reaction, once uh, things start looking up for the Rona is going to be that Clorox sells off. But you got to think, um, we're not eradicating coronavirus. And I think that uh, it's going to be something to think about when uh, you're looking at disinfecting. The problem with Clorox is that they haven't been able to keep up with demand. And they said that they weren't going to be able to actually be to catch up to that demand until early 2021. So that's why we've been seeing the sell off on top of, you know, positive, um, news coming out as far as the Rona is concerned. I like it a lot. I think that if we see this come down below $200 a share, it is an absolute steal. And that's where I would be accumulating position on Clorox for sure. I got some good news. You ready for it? What's up? Amar is finally in the house. Oh, at PM Eastern time. <laughs> Amar, we love you, man. Amar literally uh, changed his name for us. I firmly believe that. Which I, I think he did, and I don't like that. We, we just wanted to know <laughs> your name. That's it. I don't just change it back, Amar. <laughs> I feel like we we have this special bond, and like nobody knew your name but us. So his name was um, originally written in Arabic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so uh, Matt Arnold asked Chewy, which is one of your old school ones as well. Uh, is that a long term hold for you? I think Chewy's a good one. I'd rather just own Amazon, though. I mean, they're a direct competitor, and they're crushing them. I, Chewy's definitely a good company. I just don't know if uh, if it's got it in it to kind of overcome what's coming for them, and that's Amazon. So I don't – I mean, I like them a lot. This was a good one to play when the Rona first hit, but I'm not sure longer term this is a good one to continue to hang your hat on. All right, uh, let's take one more, and then I want you to touch on the public account. Yeah. And we can roll out. Um, Mike D Media, um, don't know about you guys. If you, Oh, I'm buying Sony coming up here soon. What's a good price in their pre-order? Uh, P.S., their pre-order is sold out. I guess it's for the PlayStation. Yeah, the PlayStation, uh, what, PlayStation 5? Um, I, SNE is going to be a good one. It's it's settling out here, starting to create a base at seventy five, seventy nine. It's sitting at seventy seven, twenty seven right now, just up under a half a percent. This has got some really good upside, but I think the thing of it is, is that this is probably already has the price baked into the PlayStation. Um, you know, there could be a nice pop if we see unexpected sales numbers as far as PlayStation is concerned, and maybe that's the play. But I would like to get it. If it somehow comes back down to seventy five bucks, that's where I would want to be holding it at, not not at seventy seven. And it really, it's when in the grand scheme of things, it's not that far off from its support here. But I would still just rather wait for it. Let your pitch come to you here. Nice, uh, Satish. We did talk about Nike. We do think it's a good earnings play. Tune in on Sunday, Stockwatch Sunday, thirty p.m. Eastern time. We're going to actually have that on one of our top five stocks, so we'll talk about that. That was pretty good, right? Yeah. yeah. Ema asks, uh, who do you think is better? I got to ask this question. I That's what I, I was laughing no at. Thing. That's what I was laughing at. Who do you think is better looking, Pat McAfee or Roby? Schultz isn't, isn't good looking. Let's be real here. Looks like a broke-ass Michael Phelps. But <laughs> Pat McAfee or Rogan, who's better looking? Oh, it's got to be McAfee all the way. A Rogan? Yeah, definitely. Rogan looks like a sweaty salami, like in a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like a like he's just red and like he, like I sometimes when I was laughing hard I felt like I looked like Rogan because like veins were popping out and I was sweaty yeah. and I looked like <laughs> it was like a salon. <laughs> yeah, and McAfee got that tan going on right now too. So um, no, Mac. Yeah, he was like, a yeah. stud in that in uh, in that that latest wrestling match. Uh, if anybody caught that man, he was flipping off the off the uh, ropes and everything. It was crazy. 
Yeah, Rogan did get that money, but Pat McAfee got that FanDuel money. He sure did. Both got money. That's what I'm. That's Anyways, what I'm looking forward to. I digress. Talk about the Give public stock. That. How's it doing? Tell people about Weeble. Yeah. So um, uh, this is if you guys aren't familiar with the platform that we're using, this is Weeble. Um, uh, it's uh, something that I recently started to get into as far as brokerage is concerned, and decided to create a public account with Weeble. Um, I will be putting a link in the description if you guys want to be a part of it. it helps to support this channel. Um, you get free stock. I get a free stock. It's kind of how it works. Um, but, uh, the public account is just something that you would get access to daily changes every day. So, um, I'm usually in and out of something every day. So I'll up- update you guys every day. If you want to be a part of the chaos crew again, hit that join button and you'll get access to this. Um, but obviously a kind of a mixed day. I told you guys I got into rocket today. So, so far so good on that Penn national has been absolutely killing it. I've been in and out on this one. This has probably been my best, one of my best winners next to Peloton so far in the small account. Tesla is still just down around 6%, which is way better than what it was. Um, obviously we already talked about Smith and West and how I'm doing there. CrowdStrike still hanging in there. Still believe in that one. Oracle, obviously risk reward jet blue as well. And Nvidia, uh, I'm almost half inclined to add to Nvidia here soon. So any of you guys in the chaos crew, look for that as well. But um, that's the uh, the public account. That's all we got. All right, folks. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I don't know what was up with the uh, the uh, notification system, but it looks like we had a pretty decent turnout overall. Thanks so much for hanging out. And if you guys want to be part of the chaos crew, again, hit the join button, click the description to see all the other stuff. Go follow us on social media at only chaos, pretty much everywhere. So that is it guys. Uh, please like subscribe if you haven't already, and we will catch you this weekend. Stock watch Sunday for eight at eight thirty PM Eastern time. And I think that's all I got. Is that all you got? That's all I got. Peace, Peace all right. love and hair grease. Get the hell out of here. See ya. Bye.